It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, we have a new bottle here to uncork. What do we got? We have Kentucky Peerless Bourbon. Kentucky Peerless Bourbon. Hold while I do the noisy part. If he can. Ooh, this is a whole thing. 10 minutes later. <laughs> All right, success. Of course, we know the rye came back uh, recently. About, yeah, a couple years ago. The, the brand itself came back. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 2015, they started laying down barrels. And uh, four years later, now this guy's ready. Kentucky Peerless's first bourbon without a prescription since Prohibition. That's right, yep. Yeah, was just like... started releasing this summer. Oh, and pause for cork pop. Oh, that one had some some spittle, yeah, but not the not the pop not that the pop I, you were not expecting. the pop I was looking for. I was calling it call it something else. Hmm. This pop brought to you by WedgewoodRings.com. We now have a sponsor for our cork pops. Wedgewood rings is a ring that I am uh, not wearing because because <laughs> you don't love me anymore. <laughs> because it's only been a few days, Chad. <laughs> I took it off when I got home, uh, but it is where I got my wedding ring. Yes, this is our first episode as a newlywed couple. Yeah, when I introed myself, I almost wanted to say, hey, I'm Sarah Perkins. Perkins, that's right. We are we are now married, and WedgewoodRings.com is where I got my custom wedding ring that had a barrel head that was uh, put into the, well, you're, see, you're seeing the pictures on the screen inlay. now. It's beautiful. Yeah, so the inside is, is a barrel head. And starting in October and running all through the month, Bourbon Night viewers can enter coupon code BourbonNight10 at checkout for 10% off of your order. You can get your own ring. They have a variety of woods already there, staves, that you can use, or you can send them your own like I did. So that is WedgewoodRings.com. How sentimental are you, Chad? Our Cork Pop sponsor, how about it? I cork like Pop it. sponsored by? <laughs> yeah. I like this Cork Pop sponsor thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Yeah, so this is four years old, like we said. This is a sweet mash. Chad, can you tell us what the difference between a sweet and sour mash is? Well, a sour mash is where they leave some of the setback behind to maintain consistency. Between batches. Between batches. Sweet mash, they just clear it all out. They start a whole new mash. Mm -hmm. A whole new thing. A whole new world. Each time. <laughs> Each time. So that's a little different. It's non-chill filtered. Yeah, non-chill filtered. That has become a more popular thing, but not, not everyone does that. Uh, no water added because it's also barrel proof. And it goes in at 107 proof. Yeah, 107 proof because this version is 109.5 proof. You might be thinking, well, it's a little bit low for barrel proof, but when your barrel entry is 107 proof, that is lower. That's something that Michter's also they believes in. They do a lower proof. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, the lower barrel entry proof retains more of the flavor of the of the mash bill. I think we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. Relatively young though, at four years, but you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. This, the. But passed down for generations. I think Corky yeah. Taylor's like fourth generation. Uh, his, yes. I think it was 1889. Yeah, 1889. Started that legacy, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool that, yeah. you know, come four generations later, here it is. It's got a hell of a nose. It doesn't smell young. I don't think so either. That's what I was going to say for, for a four year old. Dang. Yeah. I also have to say that I'm in love with this bottle. Oh, and we've, we've been on a tour and we've handled an empty bottle. An empty bottle is heavy. It's heavy, yeah. This, I mean, even the, the cork topper is pretty hefty, but it's not smelling like it's 109. Like if I had to guess just by the nose, it smells more like a 90 proofer. Like I'd there's put not- i around 100, yeah. Yeah, I get like a nice candied note, a light toasty wood, not, char not a lot of char forward, but that toasted, like, you know, yeah, a little bit of grain, but it doesn't. But it just, it's like, not it like grassy or young. No, at no, all. just, just like, like the quality of those grains coming through. I mean, not a not a super fragrant nose, I guess you could say, but interesting. Yes, and very again, interesting. Not not, not what I was not young smelling at, at all. A, yeah, not at all. Okay, well, let's dive in. That has a little kick to it. Well, barrel proof. But still. Yeah, I mean, it's under 110. Sometimes I don't even react that way to Booker's. I don't I don't know if it's because I'm not expecting it. For me, it's a little bit of a, of a I mean, there's that initial, but it kind of calms down real quick, but then there's a building. It hit me on the end. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely. And it's still, fin the finish is still going and the heat is still building for me. Yeah, definitely wow. rolling into a longer mm -hmm. finish here and rolling down yes. to that Kentucky hug, yes. I was so taken aback by what I wasn't expecting that I don't, my my brain didn't wrap itself <laughs> around any flavors. You haven't, yeah. 
Yeah. I feel like I didn't really taste it. <laughs> I get a lot of the barrel. Getting some like some cocoa. Yeah. Dark cocoa. The bitterness. You ever have like a bitter chocolate or unsweetened dark chocolate and it's got that that bitterness to it in the way that people like dark chocolate bitter. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Uh, not like I don't know other things that are gross and bitter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it has a it has a hot chocolate esque flavoring to it, but it's a lot more like raw. Um, yeah. Like not your store bought hot chocolate. This is like right. Like if you've ever eaten a the piece of Alps or something. Yeah. Like, like serious lumberjack hot chocolate. If you've ever eaten a piece of like unsweetened baker's chocolate, yeah. unknowingly thinking that it was regular, like a chocolate bar, uh -huh. you're like, oh, and you, that's, yeah, and you're for, you get that. A shock. Yeah, that cocoa, that cacao, uh -huh. kind mm -hmm. of like, boom. This is one of the most intense pours that I've ever had under 110 proof. It is literally a mouthful. Like, I don't know any other way to explain it. It has such an explosion of these like flavors. It's so tough. Like, I don't know, it's like a, a real man's it's drink. A, it's a it's a baller for sure. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of missing the more typical caramel vanilla flavors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might be in there, but if they're in there, they're they're covered up by this more intense. I know what you're saying. Smoky. Not really. It's not really smoky. It definitely barrel. This. Sorry. This. <laughs> kind of all over the map here, but it, this one's a thinker for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's got things going on and I can't <laughs> tell you what they are. That's things. Because it's got all of this personality and all it comes at you with this intensity and not in a way that when you have like a bottom shelf bourbon and you drink it and you're like, oh, that's a lot because it's a lot of burn and a right. lot of aggressiveness. And mm -hmm. it's not like that. It's just different. I kind of cleared my palate. I don't know if you've no, had some done water yet. yet. Have some water. Try it again. What I kind of got. Well, go, go ahead and take that drink before I, before I open my mouth here. Okay. What I kind of got this time was more like oh. a pine or a winter mint. There's definitely some pine, pine and mint sort of working its way in there. Yes. So I'm wondering. It's, it's, we've said this before. I love this word. It's effervescent. It really is. It's, it's a. <laughs> I think I've said this before, but it's like an outdoorsman. Not messing around. This is a lumberjack. This would be a hell of an eye bourbon. opener. Like a morning bourbon. If you need to what they would, what get they on would, it. You know, the, the farmers would call an eye opener because mm -hmm. you've been working all day. You get up in the morning and you need a little eye opener. <clears throat> this would this be, would be my eye hell, opener. Because oh, it's like, oh, this is sort of an energy drink yeah, too. I'm like, like I'm, I'm up. I am up. Awake. <laughs> I am alert. <laughs> 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 so Chad, normally if yeah. things are over 100, we put a couple drops of water in it. And based yeah. on our experience just now of like cleansing our palate, taking another sip, I think that really changed it for me. Yes. It really brought out, like you said, those minty and pine notes and helped that almost that cacao bitterness back mm -hmm. off a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I do kind of want to add a couple yeah. drops of water Absolutely. and let it sit for a bit. We'll do it. We're going to add five drops of water. Perfect. We're, gonna, we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. We're gonna see what's going on. Uh, but as we start this little 10 minute break here, we wanna tell you about our home on the internet is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where we now have our new challenge coins. It's a series that we're starting, great states in America of uh, bourbon. Uh, since bourbon Because all the states only... are great, yeah. but yeah. the bourbon states is the bourbon, where we'll start. bourbon states, of course, Kentucky is numero uno. That's where we're from. Uh, they're uh, limited up to 500. This is number 438. So if you order, we well, might just toss this one in there, 4, 438. We handled it. Um, and dropped it we like I did it. last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, A yeah. A little extra cuddle. Give it some love. It also fits on your Glencairn if you want to trap the nose. Sure. That Speaking type of, of Glencairns, those are also available. Uh, Glencairns, t-shirts, water glasses, all that, whiskeyambitions.com. You can visit us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash it's bourbon night. You can find fun polls. Uh, we have breaking news there all the time, um, Patreon only podcasts, and so much more. Yes. Every month, every week. Patreon.com slash it's bourbon night. All right, I'm gonna let this sit for about another nine minutes now, and we will be back. And we're back, that didn't take too long. Five drops of water have been added. Let's see what it has done. Ooh. That is a, that's a different nose now. Now I am sort of getting some caramel. I was gonna say, a little caramel, a yeah. little brown sugar. Completely different nose. A hint nose. of vanilla. Yeah. This, it's really helped it's those traditional, traditional bourbon flavors come And I feel like, you know, maybe letting this open up for a month. 
Absolutely. Might, we should definitely revisit this on a live. In it about was my a month. first thought. Yeah. I still get that like candied. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, no. It's, yeah. It's a lot more candied brown sugar mm -hmm. sweetness. All right. See what it's done to the taste. That really knocked that. The f the, the the forwardness. That of it. forward. Yeah. It's still there, and it's but it's there more in that like, in a gentler cocoa uh -huh, kind of uh -huh. arena. Yeah. But I think it allowed that toasted note to be a more, like you said, it, it knocked it back, it tamed it just a little bit, and it allowed more of the flavors, I think, to be in a bit more harmony. Rounded off some of those edges. Sure, because now I'm feeling like that note with the toasted oak and there you've got some of these caramels and vanillas coming in, it's making it a lot more balanced mm -hmm. and approachable. But man. I did think that there was something super intriguing about how intense it was. Yes, and I, I was getting ready to say, I would not start off by adding water mm -mm. every time we go through this bottle, I'm gonna try it neat. I think we, if we ever add water, we always try it neat first. Yeah. But you definitely want to experience, you know, if, if you're if you're cracking a bottle and doing an neck pour, you definitely want to experience that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think, you know, getting acclimated to it and then cleansing your palate with some water going back, that kind of worked for us to yeah. un unlock some other things. Maybe just having that little bit of residual water in your mouth, sure. just, you know, sort of did some things. Um, I like it a lot with water. Me too. Maybe if I was having two glasses, not two classes, two pours of this. On the second one, I might, you know, explore it a little bit, put some water in it. Yeah. I, I feel like my first one, I want to I wanna kind of keep that, that intense relationship yeah. going, you know? I hear what you're saying. I think that there is something super interesting about trying it the first time without the water, just to know what you're working with. Again, like you said, it doesn't need water. It's just interesting what the water does to it, and I'm enjoying it more with a couple of drops of water. Which is not something that I say very often. No. Um, and the more you, again, get acclimated to the version with water, you also start to see, oh, there's that old flavor now mm -hmm. back in here. It, yeah. it, so it, you know, I'm still, still multifaceted. And I also wonder how much uh, the water mm. had to do with it and how much it sitting open in the glass yeah. had to do with it, letting it open up. So yeah. no, I'm really glad that we got to try this because it's rare now that I think that we come across something that perplexes us so much. Uh, not that we're like geniuses or anything, but we just, we drink, oh. we sample so frequently. Yes. Um, we're familiar with so many things. Tasted it's, a lot of the catalog so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun um, to come across something that makes you stop and go, Makes huh. you go, hmm. Makes That's you go, That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. We got this bottle at Justin's House of Bourbon uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. It was the only place we could find it <laughs> for sale. Uh, though at the dis distillery, they did have a few of their little 200 little milliliters um, that we picked one up. But as far as a full bottle, this is the only place I could find it. Retail, we've seen some different information. Um, I think we read initially it came out at around $70. The lowest I saw was 70 for the first release back in June. But also heard up to 120. Uh, so let's just call it a hundred. So a hundred dollars for a young bourbon, yes, but also a non-chill filtered uh, and barrel proof legacy brand brought back to life. What are you going to give it? Oh, I like it. This is a tough one. I okay. like it. hundred dollars is a lot of money for a four-year-old. Like, did, did the teleprompter no. freeze? Well, wait, we don't have <laughs> a teleprompter. A hundred dollars is quite a bit for a four-year-old bourbon. Um, but I really do like how much this is making me think. And I think, I'm glad that we have it, if that says anything. So like, would I buy it again? I would. Okay. I think because it's so hard to get, if you come across one of those smaller ones, which we saw a ton of them up there, I think that that might be your way to go. Actually, as an they, intro. they sold out of them while we were up they there. They did? Yes. Dang it. <laughs> I think you might've been seeing the rye also. I may have been snuggling with the distillery cat. Yeah, you were for sure. I think I would buy another bottle once this one's gone. So there's that. Now for your average person who might not play in the hundred dollar realm, I would say look for a 200 milliliter. I love that they have those. Me too. Uh, and then also look for a good pour at a bar just to see how you like it before you plop down the money. And but, the rye too. Yeah, the rye. We First rye that we got was a 200 milliliter. Yeah. For like 
30 bucks. Yeah. So, hey, there you go. And it was a pick, but I've got to give it one or the other, right? So if I just said I'd buy another bottle, I think it's got to be a That's how up. I feel. Yeah. For And all I can say is for myself, right? For myself, yeah. that's how I feel. Well, this is definitely one that, you know, you're going to want to have on your bar cart so when people come over and like, oh, you you got a bottle, like, yes, here, let me pour you some, you know? It's definitely a conversation starter and can continue a conversation about this. Last little point to that. Mm -hmm. I will support what they're doing with bringing back this historic brand. It is a family brand. Yeah. They're doing it the right way. They waited four years. They didn't try to put something out that was young. They clearly are investing in the quality. And so you vote with your dollars, right? I'm happy to vote for businesses like that. Way to go. To keep, to keep Nicely put. doing things. So yeah. I'm excited to see what they come out with next. So there I consider my $100 not only investment in this, but an investment in their future. There you go. All right, nicely said. Hey everyone, uh, if you're new to the channel, you can click up here to subscribe. Right here are some suggestions of other videos that you can go watch. We'll see you over there in those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.